Then we get into some technical sh**. There are terms like total harmonic distortion. This indicates how badly the sound will be distorted by the transmitter. You will want this to be as low as possible. Because who likes distortion, right? Nobody! Then there is a term called signal to noise ratio. This is how much noise is present in your signal compared to the music, etc., that you put into the transmitter. This can be as bad as that nasty cheap cell phone you bought when you were broke and the music sounded like it was in a snowstorm with all the hiss and squeals and horrible sounds. For this, you want the ratio to be as high as possible. So more signal, less noise. The problem with non-FCC approved transmitters is that they might not be completely honest about this information and could send you a transmitter that does not at all meet these specifications that they claim. It's a real hit and miss luck of the draw type of situation, especially if you buy some cheap transmitter put together by a person living happily and freely in a sweatshop of their choice. I hope you picked up the sarcasm there. If not, I don't know what to tell you. What is even worse is unless you have access to some seriously expensive equipment, you might not even know how bad it is. You can of course hear what it sounds like on the radio, but you could be over deviating your FM signal and breaking the law. You could also be trying to correct the bad audio response curve with a graphic equalizer, which might be increasing your distortion level and making your signal to noise ratio worse. You could even have a poor signal to noise ratio to start off with, which is just about impossible to fix because the noise is in the transmitter before your music even gets there. Even FCC approved transmitters might meet the legal specifications but still sound bad because of the total harmonic distortion level and signal to noise ratio. The good thing with FCC approved transmitters though is that they legally have to match the specifications they claim. So you should at least be able to see some of the good and bad qualities by simply looking at their specifications. Just a side note here, transmitters don't give you that big radio sound. Nope, that comes from your audio processing. The transmitter should simply be as clean and clear as possible. That being said, some transmitters have a built-in limiter processor that can give you a very loud sound so it's easier to sound like a big station even if you don't have expensive processing. On the point of limiter compressors, if you buy a transmitter with no limiter at all, you are going to have a very difficult time keeping the sound from distorting and going outside the legal limits of signal deviation. So having a built-in limiter should be a prerequisite for choosing a transmitter. Many of the cheaper or non-FCC compliant transmitters don't have a limiter, so you will constantly be worried about the audio levels. By the way, that is the way many unlicensed broadcasters get caught. Yeah, because their station sounds like sh**. There are also professional transmitters that don't have built-in limiters, but the assumption would be as a professional you would know to attach a limiter to the transmitter either using a brick wall limiter or through your audio processor. As far as reliability, non-FCC approved transmitters again are hit and miss and could work for 5 minutes and then just stop working. One thing that makes a huge difference is the power output protection. Many high quality transmitters come with a built-in output protector which either shuts down the transmitter or lowers the power way down to a safe level if something goes wrong. This can happen when you are installing the transmitter and antenna or over time when your cable and connectors get worn out. A radio cable can easily become bad from weather or just a bad installation. This can cause your transmitter to blow its power transistors. This basically makes your transmitter useless. This can happen in seconds and you no longer have a transmitter. It actually happens a lot when people buy their first transmitter and are so excited that they switch the transmitter on without an antenna plugged in. And yep, it's goodbye transmitter. This is normally a concern for transmitters with power over a few hundred watts, but in fact even if you have a transmitter of just a few watts and up, you should really take this seriously because the signal can also cause damage if it shorts out. Not all FCC approved transmitters have this protector though, so be sure to check the specifications for this. Then to the transmitter power. Yeah! 